It's going to be ugly, y'all. Welcome back to Street Scores. It's your boy Rico giving y'all that 2017 Week 7 preview edition of Redskins Report. It's time for revenge. I'm going to structure this different than the 49ers preview from last week. I have 10 major points of emphasis that the Redskins need to focus in on for this victory that we're about to get. Let's get it. Why did he? Why is that? If any of y'all don't remember, we already lost to the Eagles this season in week one. We lost 30 to 17 at home. Disrespectful. But the game was way closer than the score shows. That fumble call was trash, and if they didn't call that a fumble, Kirk Cousins would have had a chance to make a game-winning drive. And as I've mentioned before, he's done so 9 out of the 37 starts he's played. And you have to remember that we play ahead of a lot of those 37 starts. But anyway, let's get to point one. Third downs. Third downs were a very crucial divide between us and them. They converted 8 of their 14 third downs while we only converted 3 of our 11. This is why they had 34 minutes and 16 seconds time of possession to our 25 minutes and 44 seconds time of possession. And with a lump-sided time of possession, there's going to be a lump-sided amount of yards with them gaining 92 more yards than us that game. And more yards presents opportunities for more points. Neither of us ran the ball well in that game. but. LeGarrette Blunt, who didn't have a great game stat-wise, did punch through some very deflating first downs on some short yardage third downs. We need to tackle him with fundamentals. Coming in with a strong shoulder is going to get our defensive players ran over and on a highlight tape that Blunt can show his grandchildren years later down the line. Point of emphasis 2, turnovers. Beyond the fact that we couldn't bring Carson Wentz down for Saxman when our defense had him in their arms, our biggest strike to the heart was turnovers. We had four of them. One of them was controversial. Really, it was just trash, but I'm trying to be nice. But winning a game in the NFL with four turnovers is nearly impossible. I'm surprised we were even as close as we were in that game. Now, speaking of Carson Wentz, my next point of emphasis is bringing him down when we have him. Our defense brought a lot of pressure against Wentz in that week one game, but failed to bring him down on a lot of crucial plays that resulted in points. It was nerve-wracking. Y'all have to bring him down. Down every chance y'all create with a rush because with Jonathan Allen's absence we are expected to get far less pressure this time around next men up AJ Francis and Anthony Lanier capitalize on good opportunities please can we bring in a big athletic quarterback to practice against and simulate Carson Wentz six foot five 240 pounds scrambling and moving around the pocket so the defense can properly prepare for this game can we borrow Cam Newton for a day Please spot us, Cam. Westlake alumni, bruh. Show me some love. But back to Wentz. He went 26 for 39 on passes with 307 yards and two touchdowns. We need to bring those numbers down, y'all. Point four. Zach Ertz was unguardable, uncoverable, and a lot of other uns. We have to find a way to slow him down. Have to. It's going to be a struggle, though, with Josh Norman already ruled out and Bashad Breeland being ruled questionable. So even if Bashad plays, he's going to be hurt. Well, more hurt than the average NFL player on an average NFL day that's running full speed in the 200 and 300 pound men for hours and hours on a weekly basis. Like, beyond that hurt. Zach Ertz had 8 receptions on 8 targets for 93 yards. He was catching everything thrown his way. We can't have that on Monday night. He was their most productive receiver, and he's coming from the tight end position. Point 5 takes us to the offensive side of the ball. I understand that we have been getting off to some good starts in games. We have scored a touchdown in the first quarter and taken early leads in 4 straight games, which we couldn't get out of this team at all last year. And then we would have to play catch-up, gunslinging ball in the second half of games 
games and finally look like an NFL offense in the third and fourth quarters. Now it's the opposite. We come out blazing and then just sizzle out after halftime and then get it back together by like the late fourth. To beat the Eagles, who have the offensive potency to score every possession, we have to come out balling all four quarters. If we somehow end up with a big lead, do not slow down. Run the ball effectively to run the clock out and also keep your foot on the pedal, please. Now speaking of running, point six is we need to run the ball better. We need to get back to running the ball like how we did against the Rams and the Raiders. But that's going to be hard with Trent Williams needing knee surgery. He plans on delaying it till the offseason because it's going to be around a five month recovery. So that there implicates that he needs surgery and will not be the football equivalent of 100% at any point this year. It's also going to be hard to run the ball if our tight ends go out there and cha-cha slide against the Eagles front seven. We need them to block way better than that last game for us to even be effective on both sides of the ball. If they block well and our own line does what they do and that's hemming people up and moving folks off the line, then we can throw Rob Kelly a good welcome back party and Chris Thompson can do his running, receiving, and screen game thing. We especially need the O-line and tight ends to step up this game because we are facing Fletcher Cox and that very effective Eagles D-line who have been wreaking havoc against teams all season so far. Now running the ball will be very key because it will help my seventh point of emphasis. And that's elevating Kirk Cousins' game and giving him some backup. His game against the Eagles in week one was definitely one of his two worst games of the season so far and hopefully ever. He had a decent amount of yards throwing for 240, but he had one interception and two fumbles with only one touchdown, resulting in my stupid self only getting 10.6 fantasy points out of him in my ESPN Fantasy League. But he's turned it around since week three against the Raiders. In his last three games, he's had 915 yards throwing with an average of 305 per game across this stretch. And he's had eight total touchdowns with only one turnover, which is that throw that was basically a punt to the 49ers. Third and long, threw it deep on their side of the field, didn't affect much. But speaking of not having much of an effect, our wide receivers. They have been making enough plays to get us some wins, but they aren't breaking out as much as I hope. Specifically Terrell Pryor. I'm still waiting and expecting him to become AJ Green Part 2. And Josh Doxson is emerging, but I still want to see more. But I do understand that it's hard to shine as a wide receiver on the Redskins because Kirk Cousins loves to spread the ball. He successfully threw to eight different receivers against the 49ers last week. I personally love it as long as everybody he's throwing to steps up and makes plays, but I definitely want to see Terrell Pryor and Josh Doxson make some significant progress. I want them to step up big. And another person who needs to step up big is Nick Rose is our new field goal kicker since Dustin Hopkins has been placed on injured reserve after the game against the 49ers last week. I don't know what's going on with that haircut though. Even though he has yet to play in an NFL regular season game, he outperformed the other three kickers that were brought in for a tryout this week. He was perfect on all of his kicks. I believe in him. I hope he believes in himself because this may be a very close game and every point will count. I'm going to be on the edge of my seat every time we kick a field goal, even on PATs. Because we saw last week against the 49ers that PATs aren't automatic anymore. We almost lost because of it. And so far this season, I did some research. NFL teams have missed a total of 21 PATs. This 2015 rule change to kick PATs from the 15 yard line has had some very significant effects on game. Now I'm hoping Nick Rose lands us on the beneficiary side of this rule chain. Go out there and do what you've been doing. You'll be alright. And the 10th and final point of emphasis, Redskins, please stay healthy. Injuries have been killing us. Ninja Scroll injury reports. Injuries are the reason we lost against the Kansas City Chiefs in my opinion. Injuries are the reason we almost lost to the 0-6 49ers. Injuries have cut the season short for our first round pick of that season two years in a row. Josh Doxson last year and Jonathan Throdham Hands Allen this year. Our best corner Josh Norman, who's having a Pro Bowl season as expected, has been out for two and a half games now. The best left tackle in pro football is playing with one good knee. Our starting running back seems to only play the first quarter of every game this season. Our DB's backups backups are banged up. All I want for Christmas is a healthy team. Because if we are healthy, then we are winning. We are offensively unstoppable at full power, and our defense is locked down and big hidden at full capacity. 
I will have an injury report video out to y'all well before Monday night's game against the Eagles, I promise. But please stay healthy, Redskins. Just I don't I don't even know what kind of advice to give to that. Just just be safe out there. But that's it for this episode. Thanks for the view. The Eagles are first in the NFC East, and their only loss is to the Kansas City Chiefs, who many believe to be the best team in the NFL, or at least the most well-rounded. Historically, the Eagles have given us more wins on the road than any other team in the NFL. So let's add to that. Also, we have 86 wins, 74 losses, and five ties with the Eagles throughout our history of matchups. Let's make that 87 wins and snap our four-game Monday night losing streak, Redskins. Let's do it. But make sure y'all Dolomite fake punch that like button, favorite, subscribe. I'll subscribe back if your profile is on public. If it's on private, just let me know you subscribed. I'll get to you. And most importantly, please comment and share. And again, thank y'all for the support. I'll catch y'all later. I'm out.